All right, I can't keep delaying this Cosro drop video. Already had it fully recorded, but this one I kinda just wanna have done today and then just start streaming. Uh, I am not going to be talking about Cosro drop as a single core farmer because I have seen it, I have heard it, and I completely agree. You should not be trying to like buff up this unit so much that she could three turn MP. You just shouldn't. Her base refund is like in the 20s or 30s with plenty of uh, Scotty buffs, plenty of quick buffs, including her own. It just doesn't work. You're better off using her uh, very similar to Doman where she's just getting her MP uh, her, like off 100% battery and you just keep wave clearing like that. And then if you have a single target DPS, Hopefully they're also crit DPS and they can just like crit the last whatever wave you need to crit down an enemy. They just have what they need. And she does make that somewhat easier as long as the character has their own crit buff. If they don't have their own crit buffs, they're kind of shit out of luck because Kazura drop is not going to give other characters crit buffs. Despite her being extremely comparable to Scotty, there is a very clear difference of what Ozra Drop wants to enable for crits versus Scotty and Ruler Scotty. Base attack 11.2k. Uh, this is slightly below average, but not enough to be like super concerning. Like it's not like uh, Bunny Toria her, how her base attack is like 9.5k. Plus, she has a 70% attack buff in her own kit. But, yeah. No, like, this isn't terrible. Alter Egos don't have a positive or negative damage modifier. So, what you get is what you get. It's just, like, normally against Calvary, she'd be 1.5. But that's... Uh, it's It gets complicated, especially with what CEs you run on her. HP... Uh, this is slightly higher than nah, it's average. This is average. 13.8k is average. Uh, she has a pretty chunky heal too, so it's not like needs her HP this high or not this high to be super high. MP charge 0.68% with a almost normal, yeah, pretty much average alter ego numbers of Star Gen and Star Wave. Her refund is shit, but not her face card refund. Her face card refund is fine. Actually, like, really disgustingly good. Um, especially her arc sprint. This thing is basically 100% battery when you're running double cause or drop. It is easily, pretty easily 100% battery. Like, that's... That's the kind of gameplay that cause or drop wants like wants to enable she wants your face your face guards to crit and you will get heavily rewarded for your face guards critting uh, if you don't crit you lose out on pretty much everything a lot of what caused her to drop past off also funny banana and then Marianne. Honestly, I'm a little more partial to Mirian, but that's because I read through Lost World 6. I didn't play through um, Fate Extra. I didn't, sorry, I didn't read through Fate Extra Triple C, uh, Foxtail, and uh, I didn't read through anything else for that has to deal with Cosmo Drop OC3 um, or even the new event. So I'm more partial to Mirian. Her deck. It's really good for refund, double quick, double arts, and unironically, she is actually showing you, the player, what kind of deck she will work the absolute best with. But she kind of works for every single quick deck. As long as you're quick, she works with you. Even if you're not quick, she still works with you. Definitely not as much, but Murian still will buff up someone regardless of what car type they are. It's just like quick is just gonna get the most benefits. So four hits on quick, three hits on arts, four hit on buster, five hit extra attack. 
Uh, extra attack. Yeah. All right. It'll be okay. Oh, I can't wait until I get my new desk and I'm like centered right because this is annoying. Um. Yeah, the refund on these off rip isn't bad at all. Like three hits on 0.68. This is good in general. And then you take in, into account double Murian and this is, you're basically going to have 100% arts on these. 200% quick on these if you crit. It's, it gets really nasty. First skill, guaranteed drain. Debuff success rate up 30% for three turns. This is extremely important because it fights off pretty much every single kind of magic resist in the game. It is only very specifically goddess essence plus magic resist combo or debuff immune that stops Mur Murian or Kazuro drop from landing her debuffs. And unfortunately, most of the characters that have that combo are the Sakura series, who she's supposed to be fighting and is like at almost her most, most lethal against, but it, it is what it is. Secondly, she inflicts quick res down and crit, crit res uh, down of 50% uh, for one turn as a debuff. And then for, she gives herself a regeneration buff that applies the same debuff uh, for the next few waves. So this right here fights the whole issue most people have with debuffs, especially in farming. They don't refresh. You only get them once. Uh, car, uh, quick res down is basically a quick res up that you put on the enemy. So it works on instead of it only buffing your character, it buffs every character that's on the field and is going to do uh, fit that debuff. It's why defense down is disgusting because it's just free damage for everyone else uh, on the team. Quick res, it's only for people using quick cards. This crit res down, this is not increasing your crit damage. Whatever card you crit with, you get that res down. This is why I say double Cosro drop, you have 100% arts down. Um, basically, Cosro drop isn't buffing herself. She's buffing the whole team through debuffs. And if she didn't have this part, oh, sorry, this part, she would be significantly worse. If she didn't have this, uh -uh. she would have been relegated to only being a turn three buffer for Oberon. But instead, now she is a different type of quick support, one that I think quick has needed for a, a while. For the longest time, I thought Alco is what quick like really needed was like a quick unit that could um, give charge per turn and reduce cooldowns. I felt quick needed that like a lot to up their consistency, um, and it, that does work for like the really like the loopers that really really struggle with looping. Um, Technically, even Cosro Drop falls in that camp. Like, you use Alco, not Super Alco, just regular Alco. Um, <clears throat> uh, you'd swap out one of the Scotties, bring Alco in, and then you'd have 150 plus, sorry, uh, 130 plus from the Scotties um, and Alco, and then 20 charge per turn. Uh, and if a quick unit is starting at 50 percent that's pretty much they shouldn't have issues refunding at, like after that you start them from 50 you give them all that shit if they're still not looping three turns that quick unit is dog shit they are not meant to loop that's like you give that to carmilla and she still only loops 10 percent it's like okay we're, we're not even gonna try it all right second skill this is why uh, it's okay that she's not a standard looper. It's okay that her best comps are double Kazuro drop and Geronimo. That's not a joke. If you have a pen five maxed out for your Kazuro drops, like both your support, the support one and your own, you can pretty much get away with Atlas Mysticode and Geronimo and I mean, like, that's a damn good way to bond farm. No, you use one five star and a three star 
and you don't care about your back line i i fucking love farming like that it's like one of the reason ku caster is fucking bond 10 on my alt and my main account because he pretty much solo farm atlas for how fucking like stupid who casters damage is also super useful in lottos or was before 90 plus plus uh, i i don't think who caster is doing that kind of damage anymore uh for lottos it, it was okay for the last one but this this one with 90 plus plus yeah that's that's not enough it's got to be like a much higher uh ranking who caster uh anyway that base is a 50 percent battery and if you don't have any other soccer series on the field it is cooldown reduction of one for an entire kit this soccer series does not have to be on your team it's on the field so if you're fighting soccer series don't plan for cooldown reduction instead you're gonna get another scaling battery up to 50 percent for each soccer series so this is a battery that at, to its max potential at mp5 is a 300 percent battery but there are so few cases where that's actually possible but it just so happens that the current um challenge quest for jp is exactly that situation with you fighting causer drop passion lip and belt but if you do double counter drop and it's just mp1 both of them have 100 percent battery that's two waves cleared to me that has so much value by itself because causer drop is an omni farmer it doesn't matter what the enemies are as long as they're all one class and even if there are mixed classes as long as there's one that is like super effective against the other and at least neutral to the third one you win that's cause drops whole gimmick as a farmer the only time she really loses is if you're, you're fighting three enemies that all are able to kill each other and have resistance against each other that's the only case where all three of them are a triangle like if it's if you're fighting a lancer a caster uh, sorry a lancer a saber and an archer that is the one case where cause or drop will not work because she has to fight no matter what in that case she has to fight class advantage and that comes from this skill cleanses her all her debuffs she heals for 5k reduces defense for one enemy by 50 percent for three turns this is like one of the highest defense downs in the entire game straight up it's not aoe but it doesn't matter when it's at 50 percent it doesn't take much more after this to hit the cap and the only reason you need more is if the enemy is like stacking defense as well So the note here is this class change does not work on shielder or beast at all doesn't matter if it's npc or a normal beast we're not i like i don't blame them for this because this is a fucking headache like because culture drop would have to be targeting a specific type of beast to get that class advantage and why the fuck would it make sense for cause drop to just become a beast that actually doesn't make sense she would just be a beast if she could become one anytime she felt like so lore accurate thing here i i truly don't have a problem with this um important thing to note class score stays for alter ego so don't feel you have to max out every single class score for every single class for cause or drop to be effective you level alter ego if you want to level alter ego and it still affects her the same exact way. So, yes. If you want to compare her to Domin, feel free. I think that's a very fine comparison. And they specifically made her lawful good, 
specifically so she would not work with Doman. Doman gets all the buffs from Kazura Drop easily, but he cannot buff up Kazura Drop. And I think it would have been a huge thing. Like, Kazura Drop would have just been the best character in the game if she was Chaotic Evil, which I think a lot of people thought she would be. But going back to like some of what I've read about her, um, it makes way more sense why Murian was a part of her. She basically has a fairy's purpose. I think she says it like an AI's purpose, but like it's the same shit. She was created to do something. And as long as she's doing it and not completely supplanting her uh, prime objectives, how can that not be anything but lawful good? You're literally following your, your orders to the letter and not straying from it. Like, technically speaking, that would fall under lawful good. If, 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 we're, if we're bringing mythology into this, BB is her god. Technically speaking, she created her. She is following the objectives that came down from her creator, and she she is fulfilling them to the best of her abilities. Is is that not what lawful good means? Like when we talk, like, and this is talking about strictly a non-human. If we're when we're talking about humans, morality comes into things. But if we're not talking about humans, we see AIs trying to trick people into thinking they're actually real people right now. I just saw um, a moist critical video about that happening. And it's scary that it's happening already. Yeah, the Nasu wrote this like 10 years ago and then Foxtail came out like five more years before AI was even a real thing. God damn. We, we knew we've known this was gonna happen for fucking years but who know like honestly who knows if we didn't just do a self uh fulfilling prophecy and all these ais actually got trained off our thoughts about what ai would actually do to us if it got somewhat sentience that i think is just a rabbit hole i'm not ready to go down today passive skills 20 percent debuff resistance Territory creation EX for 12% arts buff. Again, why her arts card feels so good when it crits. It's not even 100%. It's 112. Oof. And then her main passive. 30% power mod against soccer series. 75% power mod if she's fighting someone of the same class. So, right now, in the event... If you do this skill, if you change Cosro Drops class and you are using the 50% event CE, just know that is all in the same buffs. You are taking class advantage and turning into effectively 100%, uh, 75% crit damage. If Cosro Drop is already getting plenty of power mods, her switching classes doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless he is class advantage for them there is only one case of that and that's foreigners and cause your drop fucking destroys foreigners like this isn't even a question the reason being is foreigners are weak to foreigners but they're also fully weak to alter egos so instead of trading class advantage for being neutral, but getting this crit, uh, basic crit bonus, I say I'm calling it crit because she's going to be critting anyway. With foreigners, she gets to have her cake and eat it too. She gets, she truly does get um, the full class advantage of foreigner versus foreigner. And then she also gets this crit mod on top of her, on top of it. This also has a little bit of issues with Causer Drop in the sense that this is in the same part of the formula as MP damage. 
So this is a ca another case just like CL where if you run black rail, it's not going to be as big of an increase of damage in comparison to other classes as long as cause or drop is neutral to that is the same class as that enemy um like obviously she's still gonna want black rail on the case that she's not neutral just so she has more damage but if you plan for her to be neutral the whole entire time uh black rail might not be the best option uh like poster girl that gives so much attack that might be a better option especially since attack buffs and if causer drop is your main damage dealer you're building your team around causer drop you're not gonna have that many attack buffs they're they're just not so running like poster girl like you do with cl that would have a lot more value 80 percent attack or whatever poster girl is uh One second. 80, okay, yeah, 80% attack. 80% attack for three turns, even if the CE doesn't give an attack stat, that's still fucking massive for a cause or a drop. Quick math, 80% attack on for this, and we're just gonna ignore foes for a second. Uh, that's close to 9,000 extra attack she just got for a C that isn't even gonna boost her base. Like, there's a reason why like poster girl is so disgusting on cl and it's because like for the scaling that matters way more than having mob black rail all right so moving through the appends append five this is the must uh it unlocks the uh atlas code farming where you're just really using double cost or drop and cooldown support red damage isn't terrible but it's again in the same part of the formula as this so it's going to be diluted uh and like this doesn't require you to crit this requires you to crit and it's a lower number this is just a lower priority if you can get it get it i believe that that this is an attack buff that is conditional like it would probably just be in the uh formula um if if active increase 30 attack 30 percent um yeah like it's it's worded differently so i believe this is a flat attack buff which again helpful cluster drop doesn't have attack buffs that often against moon cancers and i didn't bring up the soccer series yet but Who's the biggest moon cancer you think about when you think soccer series? It's BB. If you bring Kazuro up to fight BB, that is her most damage. If you have this, if you were already gonna do that, when a pens, uh, you can select the pens, put this on and you just smack the shit out of BB for a while. Just do the full soccer five team and just smack the shit out of BB with all with all of her mistakes right in her face. Mana loading versus extra attack. If you were gonna get these extra attack, he has them like, it's gonna get buffed because she put so much defense down. But other than that, like Hazard Drop doesn't do anything that really boosts the performance of this. Like it, it's only defense down. That's the only thing she can really do to increase this. Mana lo loading, it depends on your setup. And for quick units with 50%, it really depends. If usually if you're unlocking this, you're planning for some kind of multi-core um, that might involve Castoria, or it, or you might just be doing like setting up for like the Orbride um, to do the relooping. I don't know. It, it, again, it really depends. That's not a bad idea though, um, picking the Orbride, but it could also be like. Uh, Oberon, the Chloe stuff. So th this is a lower priority. Just care about the a pen five, and then pretty much you can unlock what you want to unlock. NP. 
four hit quick AOE damage to all enemies. Reduces their attack by 20% for three turns. This is a spammable effect, so this is also survivability for her. As long as she can keep spamming the MP. Uh, the attack, the enemy just can't do damage. And if you have two of them, you can spam this twice as fast. They can go from having 100% uh, their attack being normal to 60% down in a single, or 40% down in a single turn. So if you manage to loop both their MPs somehow, that enemy is not doing damage to you. And you can, if you can keep that, um, that suppressive fire, that's some damn good survivability. The enemy does a literal fraction of their normal damage to you. How are you dying if you're doing even more damage? To them? It's like, you, like you're a grown man, but you have a stick. They're a little kid. Oh my God, this is the perfect compare. <laughs> yeah, you are a grown man with a sword made out of twigs. This is a little child with a fucking baseball bat swinging at your knees, breaking your kneecaps. <laughs> oh my God, now I just want to see an animation of like Hazard drops, like walking around and just breaking Shinji's kneecaps. I think that would just be a really funny, but like she wouldn't even know why she's doing it to Shinji in particular. You just know she needs to do it to Shinji. Oh, missed opportunity. All right. Coming towards the end. Um, I Again, I like alter egos and moon cancers because and rulers because leveling them just pretty easy. Uh, pieces and monuments for two classes. Same for skill gems. And then seven and eight. Uh, they're usually more manageable. And some of some of these characters have these at gold mats. You need two gold mats at like these numbers. I like I will take Hazard Drop needing like this few amount of mats or this quality of mats at this amount to needing I don't remember who I was looking at, but it was like gold mats. All four of these were gold mats. Bon CE 30% MP damage, 30% crit damage. It's in the same formula. It's like they keep making these bond CEs like really good. And it's like, are you going to make these passives or are you going to fix the stats on them? Like they kind of need the pick and choose because like some of these CEs have like really good effects. It's just their stats are dog shit. Like I don't want to give up 2000 attack um, for this if I can help it because th that 2000 attack paired with black rail spits on even if it's at a lower cost like i'm not people are not giving up their black rails so like i said i can't really show um like numbers for cause drop looping there's plenty of stuff online xnaya plushy rio emerald especially because now cause drop is his favorite character next to Melison. Um, he really likes those cute yet funny characters. Um, but yeah, her refund is terrible. If you're going to use her for farming, just do double cause her a drop and just figure out how you're going to clear that final wave. Cause her drop pretty much can clear it themselves anyway. They just change class and just crit the enemy to death. Uh, but yeah, this... I said like every account could really use an Alco. Um, Kazuro drop is basically as close to, as it gets to must summon as it gets. Ka I think Castoria is the only actual must summon character in the game. But Kazuro drop is up there with Oberon, Scotty, and Vich. Like, uh, she is the next quick support. I'm not going to hear anyone try to disprove that. I'll listen to your argument, but I'll respectfully tell you to shut the fuck up because you can't tell me that she's not a support. She can be a support and a DPS. Ruler Scotty has been used in 90 plus plus nodes. I do feel that Ruler Scotty can be a support and a DPS. But Cosmo Drop, me, primarily, I see her as a support. 
a farmer and DPS comes after because again she doesn't have buffs herself she debuffs the enemy and makes whoever your other selfish DPS like it like a truck uh, I might do a video uh, talking about debuffs in FGO in comparison to Honkai and like why in Honkai debuffs feel way better than in FGO but that will be for another day uh, I'll see you guys later peace Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.